Welcome to Balancing Ledger, where tech and finance intersect. I'm Robert Hackett. And I'm Paulina Marinova. And today we're here with Asaf Wan, the CEO and co-founder of Hippo, a billion-dollar insurance startup. Welcome to the show, Asaf. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So let's talk about insurance. This is an industry that is not viewed uh, in the greatest uh, way by a lot of customers. Um, you know, we've got a colleague around the office who comes around and says, hey, 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 I'm not trying to sell you insurance or anything. So what are you doing to fix this problem in insurance? So our approach is we view our mission and what we're doing is modernizing homeowner insurance. And it has different components. The first component is we're enabling you to basically buy your policy however you want. You can buy it on your phone in three, four minutes. You can call a call center. You can you know, do it as a chat. Whatever you want to, however you want to purchase it, that's one. The second thing is that we're focused on the claim experience. And we've realized that in home insurance, the claim experience should be very humane and very empathetic because the issues and the challenges are so significant. You had a flood in the basement. You had a fire, a total loss of your home and stuff of that sort. So we have a 24-7 available concierge that they're about taking care of your stress. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna ask you, are you safe? Are you okay? Do you need me to put you in an hotel for tonight? Did, did anything was broken? Do you need a cleaning crew? Stuff of that sort. But the main thing that I'm most excited about is actually the time frame between you onboarding and having a claim. This nine year gap, which I think the industry completely forgot that there is a customer at the end of the of this funnel and basically an industry doesn't even call you a customer, call you a policy holder. And we want to bring you value because at that point of time, Robert, you're my customer, what value can we bring you? So we focus on a lot of stuff which is basically shifting insurance from being a reactive uh, company to being proactive. We give you IoT device. Every customer of us gets a smart sensor kit for free and it's something that you know is water monitored and motion sensors and smoke sensors. We send someone to your home once a year to clean gutters, check air filters, and things of that sort. We keep on monitoring using the big data your home to basically identify the risks uh, patterns before they actually happen. So if we see a discoloration on the roof from our satellite imagery, then we would let you know we see a problem like that, Paulina, and we're going to send uh, basically a roofer to fix it. So that's what for us modernizing home insurance is. So you just raised a hundred million dollars at a one billion dollar valuation. What do you plan to do with the capital? We, we, th this was a very interesting funding round for us. We wanted to align with investors that understand growth and can help build, build really, really big companies. Hence why we, we worked with Bond, uh, which is Mary Maker's new fund, which we view as probably the leaders in building really, really big companies and understand both Wall Street as well as growth and all of that world. And this is their second investment since they spun out of Kleiner yes. Perkins. Yes, so we're very fortunate in that. I think the first US one that they did, I think the previous one was an Australian company. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was about several components, basically doing a lot more in all fronts that we have. We're seeing significant growth on a lot of the, basically, a lot of the initiatives that we're having, we just want to double down. We want to double down on the team. We want to double down on, we're alive in 18 states. We want to go to 15 to 50 states by the end of 2021. Uh, we are considering, you know, all kinds of other lines in, in insurance or within the realm of OM, increasing some of the re proactive, uh, basically benefits that we're giving customers. All of these things, we, we see so much growth initiatives and, and, and things that are actually working. We just want to double down, have elevate the level of, of team members that we have and really, really pursue a lot more initiatives. Before that, it was more of a choices. We had it's this or that. Now we can actually this and that, which is something which is very appealing for us. And one of your closest competitors is another insurance tech company called Lemonade, and they're backed by SoftBank. So how do you feel about being up against a competitor who has a backer with seemingly unlimited capital? I, I, I don't think it, capital is, is the differentiative aspect. Why not? In, a, they're, they're focused on very, very different things. Lemonade is a brand for millennials focused on renters' insurance. We are focused on the for most of us, the, the biggest financial asset. It's a lot more complex, understanding what's the rebuilding cost of your house, what's the risk around your house, and it's built in a very different way. We are obsessed and you know, from morning till going to sleep, that's all we think, how to best insure your home. I think many times it's not the people with the biggest uh, 
pockets that are actually winning is the people with the most passion and the people that are the most driven and the people that are executing. Uh, we have enough money. It's not that uh, you know we're, we're a small change compared to that. I, I haven't seen SoftBank as an added bonus to basically win in a category so far. What would you say is the biggest problem that the industry faces now, the insurance industry? What is most outdated uh, of their practices? When we tried to build a product, we analyzed tens of thousands of claims of individuals against the insurance companies. These are people that were so annoyed that they felt compelled to actually go and file a complaint, which is a way higher threshold. And what you see is that the biggest problem is that people, it's not that they're not getting paid for what they in, were insured for, it's the fact that Paulina thought she's insured for something and she wasn't insured for it. And you know about it only nine years down the line when you have the claim. So you had a tree in the backyard that lifted the sewage and you thought you're covered for that, and you're calling your agent, I have a $7,000 damage, and they're saying, yeah, I'm sorry, Paulina, you never bought service line. And what is that? That's what connects the municipality to your home, and it's not covered under your policy. And then you had a surge of water coming from the sewage, that's a water backup. And you have an explosion of your HVAC, that's equipment breakdown. And you bought a house from 1983, but the damage happened in 2021, and the city of New York passed several laws, so you can't even rebuild really to the spec that's happening. There's so many of these things that you never knew about, and you assumed that the safety net is going to capture you. But now the safety net is A, smaller, and B, has these gaping holes. And that was a really, really big problem. So that's one. The second thing is the entire coverage is obsolete. If you look and open your policy, you'll realize that you're covered for stuff like fur coats, $6,000. Pewter bolts, china and silver, $5,000. Mausoleums and crypts, $5,000. I can give you a list, gold bullions, stamp collection, uh, physical bonds. And the list keeps on going, and I'm willing to bet everything that none of you guys have any of these things in their house. However, your electronics is capped at $2,000. Home office is not covered at all. Strollers, camping equipment, bicycle, all of these things are below, basically, where the deductible is. And I think that's a really big problem. Those, how we live our life in 2019 is very different than how we lived our life in 1960, but everything stayed as 1960, and we're trying to modernize it cover that stuff, which is what we're doing, as well as close these gaping holes that I was telling you about. A lot of people are predicting that there is a looming recession on the horizon. How would an economic downturn affect your business? Probably in a positive way. So uh, the insurance industry is recession proof. It's, it's based, uh, home insurance is. Home insurance. You're, you're obligated by your mortgage provider to actually have uh, your insurance policy on your home. I think there's like 110, 120 million households in the US, out of which new home sales is four and a half million dollar, million to six million homes. So in a recession, there's gonna be four million. In a really like big year, it's six million. The delta is, is tiny. It's less than, you know, it's less than 1% or one and a half percent on, on basically the entire volume. But people are actually gonna be more price conscientious. They're gonna try and save money. Hippo is saving them up to 25% on their fees. It's very, very difficult to even get a quote. Now it's available, so it takes you a minute to actually get a quote. So if anything, I think if there's gonna be a recession, more people are gonna be more price conscientious, gonna start getting more quotes, gonna start going to people that actually take care of them better, and it's not gonna be that material for us because you're obligated to have it. Hurricane Dorian is causing significant destruction. Uh, how are storms like these affecting your customers and also your business and the insurance business? It's a very unfortunate uh, event, and then you know, but but insurance is there for catastrophes as well. The biggest component of the price of your policy is actually derived by your chances and likelihood to be under a catastrophe event. That's why the policies in Florida are more expensive than the, floor, the, the policies in Arizona. What we're doing with our customers is trying to preempt and prevent and help them uh, know about it up front. So when the fires in California, that we contacted every customer that we have in the areas where the fires are at, we told them, just so you know, there's a fire that's coming in. By the way, this is my personal number. I'm the CEO of your insurance company. If you need something. You gave your personal phone yes, number to, to customers? People. And I said 24-7, this is a super stressful event, and I think the, the minimum we can do is empathy. And then we send several trucks to people's home to basically clear their, their belongings if they needed to. There were people that were asthmatic and were relatively far but couldn't breathe. We put them in hotels. We then expected that, for instance, when they're gonna come, 
they would need a renovation in the house or, or a deep cleaning at, 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 at least. There was a surge of prices because everybody needs that. We hire a company just dedicated to us and we bought it to all of our customers. Our aim was how fast can we actually put our customers back into their homes because this is your intent. Nobody wants to stay away from their home. And I think that just thinking back on the customer and what do you need and being proactive about it, that's what creates the, the opportunity. It's very sad now what's going on with Dorian, but I think that's what insurance companies should do. Be empathetic, try to help customers understand this is a super stressful time. And that's why the contract that we signed with our customer is that if God forbid something happen, we're there for them. And also my email is on our website. So if you go to our, my website, there's and like if someone can just... <laughs> people can contact me and I actually love that because people are usually either very happy or very annoyed and I want to know about both of these things. If someone has a really big problem, I'm trying to get all of you guys on the phone for 35 minutes, I want to know about that mm -hmm. and how can I act otherwise. This is an unmitigated kind of communication and same goes if someone, listen, I was talking to this and this uh, yeah. person, the customer support and it was amazing, I also want to know about that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Asaf. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm Robert Hackett. And I'm Pauliana Marinova. For more Balancing the Ledger, go to fortune.com. See you next time.